COVID-19 vaccine trial on humans starts as UK warns restrictions could stay in place until next year. London scientists in the UK will begin trials of a potential COVID-19 vaccine on humans Thursday, as the government warns it could have to rely on social distancing measures until next year, assuming no vaccine or treatment is found before then. England's chief medical officer Chris Whitty said Wednesday that the probability of having a vaccine or treatment anytime in the next calendar year is incredibly small. I think we should be realistic about that, we're going to have to rely on other social measures, Whitty said. The human vaccine trial has been developed by scientists at Oxford University's Jenner Institute and will begin Thursday, the university confirmed to CNN. Sarah Gilbert, professor of vaccinology at Oxford University, told The Times of London she was 80% confident that the vaccine being developed by her team would work. It is hoped about a million doses could ready by September. The Oxford vaccine candidate, called CHADOX1 COV-19, is made from a harmless chimpanzee virus. Vaccines made from the CHADOX1 virus have been given to more than 320 people to date and have been shown to be safe and well-tolerated, although they can cause temporary side effects, such as a temperature, headache or sore arm, according to the University of Oxford. The UK has been in so-called lockdown, with restrictions on leaving the house, except for essential reasons and daily exercise in force since March 23. As the number of new coronavirus cases start to plateau, the government is now turning to the next part of its strategy to combat the virus. Test, track and trace. The government has repeatedly promised the UK will test 100,000 people for COVID-19 per day by the end of April. That is just seven days away, yet government figures released Wednesday showed only 13,522 people had been tested in a 24-hour period. First Secretary of State Dominic Raab, who is deputising for Prime Minister Boris Johnson as he recovers from coronavirus, told Parliament on Wednesday, the UK's capacity for tests is now at 40,000 a day, raising questions as to why that number of tests is not actually being carried out. Raab said he expects to see an exponential increase in the next week, and the government is making good progress and will meet its target. Findings expected next month Meanwhile, the UK hopes to enlist up to 300,000 people to a major long-term study to track the spread of coronavirus in the population and understand the levels of immunity. Authorities hope that the study will help improve understanding of how many people are infected and how many have developed antibodies and possible immunity to the virus. Participants will form a representative sample of the entire UK population by age and geography, with initial findings expected in early May a government statement said Wednesday. Participants will provide samples taken from self-administered nose and throat swabs and answer a few short questions during a home visit by a trained health worker. The swab tests will show whether or not participants currently have the virus. They will be asked to take further tests every week for the first five weeks, then every month for 12 months. Adults from around 1,000 households will also provide a blood sample taken by a trained health worker. These tests will help determine what proportion of the population has developed antibodies to COVID-19. Participants will be asked to give further samples monthly for the next 12 months, according to authorities. This survey will help to track the current extent of transmission and infection in the UK, while also answering crucial questions about immunity. As we continue to build up our understanding of this new virus, UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock said in a statement. Together, these results will help us better understand the spread of the virus to date, predict the future trajectory and inform future action we take, including crucially the development of groundbreaking new tests and treatments, Hancock added. The study will begin with a smaller pilot phase in England only. When it comes to tracing, the UK is playing catch-up with other countries. Hancock said Wednesday that there was an NHS app in development and we will introduce contact tracing at large scale. It comes after Hancock's predecessor Jeremy Hunt, who is now chairman of the UK's Health Select Committee which scrutinises the government, wrote Tuesday that mass contact tracing should be the next national mission in the UK's battle with coronavirus. In an op-ed in the Times of London, Hunt wrote, We need every arm of the state, every spare civil servant, every local government town planner and every furloughed administrator turning their hand to the task of contact tracing. He argued that countries with the lowest death rates have generally been the biggest testers, and that's because of what testing makes possible. Quarantining of people with the virus, tracking down who they have been near, and if necessary isolating them as well. 
he said that by doing this on a huge scale, as has happened in South Korea, Taiwan and Hong Kong, you can do much less damage to the economy than European or American-style mass lockdowns. The UK is due to review its current lockdown measures again in two weeks. Ahead of that it is expected the government may update their guidance around the use of face masks, telling the public they can choose to wear a scarf or face covering, but not to wear medical face masks. Hancock said Wednesday that the government will follow the advice of the government scientific advisory group for emergencies, and then we will implement that. I can't promise that we will give everybody free masks. I mean, that would be an extraordinary undertaking. And we do have to make sure we have supplies available especially for health and care staff, where the scientific advice has been throughout that the wearing of masks is necessary in those circumstances, Hancock explained. There is a fear that recommending use of fasimisks by the general public could lead to a shortage for frontline health workers. This comes as the government continues to face intense criticism over a critical shortage of personal protective equipment for frontline healthcare workers. Rob told Parliament on Wednesday that 69 National Health Service NHS, workers with COVID-19 have now died. Biology teachers prepare to hold an exam at a secondary school in Berlin on Wednesday, April 22. A dentist wears protective equipment while treating a patient in Den Bosch, Netherlands, on April 22. A volunteer in Yangon, Myanmar, spreads calcium oxide on a road to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus on April 22. Migrants wave from balconies at a hotel in Kriniti, Greece, on Tuesday, April 21. The shelter, which hosts 470 asylum seekers, was placed in isolation after a pregnant resident tested positive for the novel coronavirus. A man disinfects a ceiling lamp at the Abinija Mosque in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, on Tuesday, April 21. A nurse holds a newborn baby, wearing a face shield as a protective measure, at a maternity facility in Jakarta, Indonesia, on April 21. Health workers at Madrid's La Paz Hospital hold a minute of silence to remember Joaquin Diaz, the hospital's chief of surgery who died because of the coronavirus. A woman applauds from the balcony of her Paris home to show support for healthcare workers on Monday, April 20. A healthcare worker stands in a Denver street on Sunday, April 19, to counter protest the hundreds of people who were demanding that stay at home orders be lifted. Mayor's office workers wear protective suits as they conduct a census in a Bogota, Colombia neighborhood on April 19. They were trying to find out how many families needed to be provided with food. The class of 2020 tosses hats into the air at the Air Force Academy graduation in Colorado Springs, Colorado. A woman sticks her tongue out of a torn mask at a reopen Maryland rally outside the State House in Annapolis, Maryland, on Saturday, April 18. Residents in multiple states have been protesting stay-at-home orders. Newly married Tyler and Karen Suters embrace following their marriage ceremony in Arlington, Virginia, on April 18. The Rev. Andrew Merrow and his wife, Cameron, were the only other attendees at the ceremony, which was held at St. Mary's Episcopal Church. Abed Kankin cuts a customer's hair outdoors in Malmo, Sweden, on Friday, April 17. Two women walk to rent a small paddle boat by the Vltava River in Prague, Czech Republic, on April 17. Cars sit at a newly opened drive-in cinema in Dortmund, Germany, on April 17. It's in front of a former blast furnace. Funeral workers in Manaus, Brazil, prepare the grave of a woman who is suspected to have died from the coronavirus. A member of the Don Bosco Foundation delivers food from the Fraternitas Project, which serves vulnerable families in Seville, Spain, on Thursday, April 16. Police officers try on personal protective equipment in Amritsar, India, on April 16. Workers in Nairobi, Kenya, fumigate the streets in the stalls of the City Park Market on April 15. Novice Buddhist monks wear face shields at the Malilakaram Educational Institute in Bangkok, Thailand, on April 15. A woman sits on a bench at an empty metro station in Prague, Czech Republic, on April 15. Health workers in Barcelona, Spain, acknowledge people who are showing their support from their balconies and windows. South Korean election officials sort out parliamentary ballots at a gymnasium in Seoul on April 15. Workers from the garment sector in Dhaka, Bangladesh, block a road during a protest demanding payment of unpaid wages. 
A woman meets with her son in a quarantiner, a container devised to allow people to visit each other without risking the spread of coronavirus, at a care center in Utrecht, Netherlands, on April 14. Firefighters transfer a patient from an ambulance in Montpellier, France, on April 14. A cemetery worker pauses while digging graves at the San Vicente Cemetery in Cordoba, Argentina, on April 14. Workers produce protective face masks at a new factory near Tehran, Iran, on April 14. Protesters stand outside the State House atrium in Columbus, Ohio, on April 13, to voice their opposition to stay at home orders. About 100 protesters assembled outside the building during Governor Mike DeWine's weekday update on the state's response to the pandemic. Medical workers in Istanbul clap for 107-year-old Havahan Karadeniz as she is discharged from the hospital on April 13. She had just recovered from a coronavirus. People in Seoul, South Korea, listen to a speech from Wang Kyo on who is campaigning for the upcoming parliamentary elections. A flower shop employee destroys unsold flowers in St. Petersburg, Russia, on April 13. A police officer requests that people return to return to their homes during a gathering that marked the Biskha Jatra festival in Bhaktapur, Nepal. A doctor in a protective chamber tests a patient for coronavirus at a walk-in kiosk in Chennai, India, on April 13. Musicians play their instruments for a retirement home in Carbon, Germany, on April 13. A woman covers herself with plastic as heavy rain falls outside a New York hospital on April 13. People in Jerusalem attend the funeral of Eliyahu Bakshi Doran, Israel's former chief rabbi who died from coronavirus complications. In Rio de Janeiro, the Christ the Redeemer statue was illuminated to make Christ look like a doctor on April 12. Pedro Apica, founder of the Akamaso Association, conducts the traditional Easter Mass in a granite quarry while maintaining social distancing in Antananarivo, Madagascar, on April 12. Bodies are stored in a vacant room at Sinai Grace Hospital in Detroit. Two sources told CNN that at least one room, which is typically used for studies on sleeping habits, was used to store bodies because the morgue was full and morgue staff did not work at night. A couple stands in a park along the Yangtze River in Wuhan, China. Priest in charge Angie Smith uses her phone to broadcast an Easter service from a churchyard in Hartley, Whitney, England, on April 12. Children wave to a person dressed as the Easter Bunny during a neighborhood parade in Haverford, Pennsylvania, on April 10. Health workers in Leghain, Spain, cry during a memorial for a co-worker who died because of the coronavirus. Volunteers spray disinfectant in a favela in Rio de Janeiro on April 10. Bodies are buried on New York's Hard Island on April 9. New York City officials say that Hard Island, which for decades has been used as the final resting place for people who died unclaimed, will also be used for unclaimed coronavirus victims. A health care worker holds the hand of a coronavirus patient being moved to a hospital near Barcelona, Spain, on April 9. Service boats spray water in London to show support for health care workers on April 9. Employees of Hyundai Card, a credit card company, sit behind protective screens as they eat in an office cafeteria in Seoul, South Korea, on April 9. People wait in their cars for the San Antonio Food Bank to begin food distribution on April 9. A worker disinfects a carved cross at the Salt Cathedral in Zipaquira, Colombia, on April 8. A cake shop employee in Athens, Greece, prepares chocolate Easter bunnies with face masks on April 8. Californian Sarah and Aaron Sanders, along with their children, use video conferencing to celebrate a Passover cedar with other family members on April 8. A medical staff member from China's Jilin Province Center cries while hugging nurses from Wuhan on April 8. Wuhan was reopening its borders after 76 days. Cars in Wuhan line up to leave at a highway toll station. Rabbi Yaakov Kotlarski places Passover Cedar to-go packages into a car trunk in Arlington Heights, Illinois, on April 7. A woman in London shows her support for British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on April 7. Johnson was hospitalized after his coronavirus symptoms worsened, according to his office. A voter checks in to cast a ballot in Kenosha, Wisconsin, on April 7. The state was going through with its presidential primary despite the pandemic.
A man is sprayed with disinfectant prior to going to a market in Tirana, Albania, on Monday, April 6. Izzy, Left, and Dibby wear ventilated dog masks in Philadelphia on April 6. People wait in line to bury loved ones at a cemetery in Guayaquil, Ecuador, on April 6. In some parts of the overwhelmed city, bodies have been left on the streets. Police detain a doctor in Quetta, Pakistan, who was among dozens of healthcare workers protesting a lack of personal protective equipment on April 6. A Catholic priest sprinkles holy water on devotees during Palm Sunday celebrations in Quezon City, Philippines, on Sunday, April 5. People shine lights from their balcony during a nationwide candlelight vigil in Bangalore, India, on April 5. A woman in Glasgow, Scotland, watches Britain's Queen Elizabeth II give a television address regarding the coronavirus pandemic. Paramilitary members unload provisions in Kampala, Uganda, on Saturday, April 4. It was the first day of government food distribution for people affected by the nation's lockdown. A police officer wearing a coronavirus-themed outfit walks in a market in Chennai, India, to raise awareness about social distancing. A woman in Moscow cooks while watching Russian President Vladimir Putin address the nation over the coronavirus pandemic. The hashtag Stayhem is projected onto the Matterhorn mountain that straddles Switzerland and Italy on April 1. The mountain was illuminated by Swiss artist Jerry Hofstetter, who is transforming buildings, monuments and landscapes all over the world to raise awareness during the pandemic. Volunteers load food bags on a truck to deliver them to low-income families in Panama City, Panama, on April 1. Designer Friedrich Jorzig adjusts a mannequin wearing a wedding dress and a face mask at her store in Berlin on March 31. People pray next to the grave of musician Robson de Souza Lopes after his burial in Manaus, Brazil, on March 31. According to authorities at the Amazonas Health Secretary, the 43-year-old died after being diagnosed with the novel coronavirus. Chris Lindbergh hands out a free lunch to a truck driver at a rest area along Interstate 10 in Socotin, Arizona, on March 31. The Arizona Trucking Association was giving away 500 Dillies Deli lunches to show its appreciation for truck drivers who have been delivering medical supplies, food and other necessities during the coronavirus pandemic. The USNS Comfort, a Navy hospital ship, reaches New York City on March 30. Another hospital ship is in Los Angeles. Both will take some of the pressure off medical facilities that are strained because of the coronavirus pandemic. An emergency field hospital is constructed in New York Central Park on March 30. Farmers deliver vegetables to a customer in St. George's Zurcher, France, on March 29. People listen from their homes as priests conduct Sunday Mass from a church roof in Rome on March 29. Georgi David Jablonovsky and his bride, Timia, are joined by close relatives during their wedding ceremony in Miss Kolk, Hungary, on March 28. Because of the coronavirus, engaged couples across the globe have had to rethink their walks down the aisle. A worker fixes partitions at a quarantine center in Guwahati, India, on March 28. Devices used in diagnosing the coronavirus are inspected in Cheongju, South Korea, on March 27. The devices were being prepared for testing kits at the biodiagnostic company South Dakota Biosensor. A student does homework in Bratislava, Slovakia, on March 27. Schools have been shut down across the world, and many children have been receiving their lessons online. A National Guard truck sprays disinfectant in Caracas, Venezuela, on March 27. People wearing face masks walk near the USNS Mercy after the Navy hospital ship arrived in the Los Angeles area to assist local hospitals dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Pope Francis prays in an empty St. Peter's Square on March 27. Coffins carrying coronavirus victims are stored in a warehouse in Ponte San Pietro, Italy, on March 26. They would be transported to another area for cremation. Members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard prepare to take part in disinfecting the city of Tehran on March 25. Lydia Hassebrook attends a ballet class from her home in New York on March 25. People visit the Beijing Zoo on March 25 after it reopened its outdoor exhibits to the public. The Olympic flame is displayed in Iwaki, Japan, on March 25, a day after the 2020 Tokyo Games were postponed. 
A woman suspected of having coronavirus is helped from her home by emergency medical technicians Robert Zabia, left, and Mike Pereja, in Patterson, New Jersey, on March 24. People practice social distancing as they wait for takeout food at a shopping mall in Bangkok, Thailand, on March 24. Authorities are seen in Madrid, where an ice rink has been converted into a makeshift morgue to cope with the coronavirus fallout. A tourist wears a face mask while visiting the Beidling section of the Great Wall of China on March 24. The section reopened to visitors after being closed for two months. People arrive at the South Municipal Cemetery in Madrid to attend a burial of a man who died from the coronavirus. Passengers arrive at Hong Kong International Airport on March 23. Giuseppe Cribari holds Sunday Mass in front of photographs sent in by his congregation members in Yusano, Italy, on March 22. Many religious services are being streamed online so that people can worship while still maintaining their distance from others. People clap from balconies to show their appreciation for healthcare workers in Mumbai, India. A woman attends a Sunday service at the Nairobi Baptist Church in Nairobi, Kenya, on March 22. The service was streamed live on the internet. A Syrian Red Crescent member sprays disinfectant along an alley of the historic Hamadiyya market in Damascus, Syria. People are seen on California's Huntington Beach on March 21. Crowds descended on California beaches, hiking trails and parks over the weekend, in open defiance of a state order to shelter in place and avoid close contact with others. A funeral service is held without family members in Bergamo, Italy, on March 21. A member of the Syrian Violet Relief Group disinfects tents at a camp for displaced people in Cafrigella, Syria, on March 21. A doctor examines Juan Vasquez inside a testing tent at St. Barnabas Hospital in New York on March 20. A mass in Rio de Janeiro honors coronavirus victims around the world on March 18. Brazil's Christ the Redeemer statue was lit up with flags and messages of hope and solidarity with countries affected by the pandemic. Medical staff wearing protective suits ride down an escalator at Moscow's Sheremetyevo International Airport on March 18. Hasidic Jewish men take part in a social distancing minion in New York on March 17. A patient in a biocontainment unit is carried on a stretcher in Rome on March 17. A pedestrian walks a dog through a quiet street in New York on March 17. People gather to collect free face masks in New Delhi on March 17. Dermot Hickey, left, and Philip Vega ask a pedestrian in New York to take their picture on a thinly trafficked Fifth Avenue on March 17. Many streets across the world are much more bare as people distance themselves from others. In the United States, the White House advised people not to gather in groups of more than 10. Students at the Atarkai Islamic School wear face masks during a ceremony in Thailand's southern province of Narathawit on March 17. People wait outside a Woolworth store in Sunbury, Australia on March 17. Australian supermarket chains announced special shopping hours for the elderly and people with disabilities so that they can shop in less crowded aisles. A member of Spain's military emergencies unit carries out a general disinfection at the Malaga airport on March 16. Displaced families near Aten, Syria, attend a workshop aimed at spreading awareness about the coronavirus. French President Emmanuel Macron is seen on a screen in Paris as he announces new coronavirus containment measures on March 16. France has been put on lockdown, and all non-essential outings are outlawed and can draw a fine of up to €135, Euros, $148. Macron also promised to support French businesses by guaranteeing €300 billion Euro worth of loans and suspending rent and utility bills owed by small companies. A police officer checks the temperatures of bus passengers at a checkpoint in Manila, Philippines, on March 16. Flowers are stored prior to their destruction at a flower auction in Alzamir, Netherlands, on March 16. Lower demand due to the coronavirus outbreak is threatening the Dutch horticultural sector, forcing the destruction of products. Body temperatures are scanned as people enter the Buddhist temple Wat Pho in Bangkok, Thailand, on March 13. Two nuns greet neighbors from their balcony in Turin, Italy, on Sunday, March 15. Pope Francis, inside the Church of San Marcello in Rome's city center, prays at a famous crucifix that believers claim helped to save Romans from a plague in 1522.
passengers wait for their flights at Marrakesh Airport in Morocco on March 15. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence takes a question during a White House briefing about the coronavirus on March 15. A Sea World employee sprays disinfectant in Jakarta, Indonesia, on Saturday, March 14. People wait in line to go through customs at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport on March 14. Travelers returning from Europe say they were being made to wait for hours at U.S. airports, often in close quarters, as personnel screened them for the coronavirus. Hundreds of people lined up to enter a Costco in Nevada, California, on March 14. Many people have been stocking up on food, toilet paper and other items. As a response to panic buying, retailers in the United States and Canada have started limiting the number of toilet paper that customers can buy in one trip. A member of the White House Physician's Office takes a media member's temperature in the White House briefing room on March 14. It was ahead of a news conference with President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. A nurse in Cremona, Italy, takes a moment in this heartbreaking photo posted to Instagram by photographer Paolo Miranda. Italy's healthcare system has been severely tested by the coronavirus pandemic. Reporters in Arlington, Virginia, sit approximately four feet apart during a briefing by Marine Corps Gen. Kenneth F. McKenzie on March 13. People walk past a closed Broadway theater on March 13 after New York canceled all gatherings over 500 people. A Costco customer stands by two shopping carts in Richmond, California, on March 13. A teacher works in an empty classroom at the Pompeu Fabra University in Barcelona, Spain. A woman looks at an empty bread aisle in Antwerp, Belgium, on March 13. Employees of the Greek parliament wear plastic gloves ahead of the swearing-in ceremony for Greek President Katerina Sekulopoulou. A motorcyclist drives through disinfectant sprayed in Jammu, India, on March 13. Workers prepare to construct an additional building on a hospital on the outskirts of Moscow. Paul Boyer, head equipment manager of the NHL's Detroit Red Wings, wheels out equipment bags in Washington on March 12. The NHL is among the sports leagues that have suspended their seasons. Students leave Glacier Peak High School in Snohomish, Washington, on March 12. Beginning the following day, schools in the Snohomish School District plan to be closed through April 24. An Uber Eats delivery biker stands at a deserted Piazza di Spagna in Rome. People at a railway station in Seoul, South Korea, watch a live broadcast of U.S. President Donald Trump on March 12. Trump announced that, in an effort to slow the spread of the coronavirus, he would sharply restrict travel from more than two dozen European countries. Workers in protective suits disinfect Istanbul's Dolabas Palace on March 11. A person wearing a face mask walks outside of a shopping mall in Beijing on March 11. Police officers restrain the relative of an inmate outside the Santana jail in Medina, Italy, on March 9. Riots broke out in several Italian jails after visits were suspended to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Medical staff in Wuhan, China, celebrate after all coronavirus patients were discharged from a temporary hospital on March 9. Traders work on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange on March 9. Stocks plummeted as coronavirus worries and an oil price race to the bottom weight on global financial markets. Rescuers search for victims at the site of a collapsed hotel in Quanzhou, China, on March 8. The hotel was being used as a coronavirus quarantine center. The Grand Princess cruise ship, carrying at least 21 people who tested positive for coronavirus, is seen off the coast of San Francisco on March 8. The ship was being held at sea. Sumo wrestlers attend a tournament in Osaka, Japan, that was being held behind closed doors because of the coronavirus outbreak. A couple rides a bicycle at a park in Seoul, South Korea, on March 7. A volunteer from Blue Sky Rescue uses fumigation equipment to disinfect a residential compound in Beijing on March 5. Airmen from the California National Guard drop coronavirus testing kits down to the Grand Princess cruise ship off the coast of California on March 5. Municipal workers are seen at the Kaaba, inside Mecca's Grand Mosque. Saudi Arabia emptied Islam's holiest site for sterilization over coronavirus fears, an unprecedented move after the kingdom suspended the year-round Umrah pilgrimage. Passengers react as a worker wearing a protective suit disinfects the departure area of a railway station in Hefei, China, on March 4. 
Teachers at the Nagoya International School in Japan conduct an online class for students staying at home as a precaution against the spread of coronavirus. Soldiers spray disinfectant throughout a shopping street in Seoul. A Muslim worshipper attends a mass prayer against coronavirus in Dakar, Senegal, on March 4. It was after cases were confirmed in the country. People wear face masks in New York's Times Square on March 3. New York reported its first case of coronavirus two days earlier. A security guard stands on the Shibaya Sky Observation Deck in Tokyo on March 3. U.S. President Donald Trump, flanked by Vice President Mike Pence, left, and Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar speaks during a meeting with pharmaceutical executives and the White House Coronavirus Task Force on March 2. Throughout the meeting, Trump was hyper-focused on pressing industry leaders in the room for a timeline for a coronavirus vaccine and treatment. But experts at the table, from the administration and the pharmaceutical industry, repeatedly emphasized that a vaccine can't be rushed to market before it's been declared safe for the public. Medical staff stand outside a hospital in Daegu, South Korea, on March 1. Health care workers transfer a patient to the Life Care Center in Kirkland, Washington, on March 1. The long-term care facility is linked to confirmed coronavirus cases. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson visits a London laboratory of the Public Health England National Infection Service. Tomoyuki Sugano, a professional baseball player on the Yomiuri Giants, throws a pitch in an empty Tokyo Dome during a preseason game on February 29. Fans have been barred from preseason games to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Commuters wearing masks make their way to work during morning rush hour at the Shinagawa train station in Tokyo on February 28. Medical staff transport a coronavirus patient within the Red Cross Hospital in Wuhan on February 28. Inter Milan plays Ludogorets in an empty soccer stadium in Milan, Italy, on February 27. The match was ordered to be played behind closed doors as Italian authorities continue to grapple with the coronavirus outbreak. A bank clerk disinfects banknotes in China's Zhejiang province on February 26. A child wearing a protective face mask rides on a scooter in an empty area in Beijing. A Catholic devotee wears a face mask as he is sprinkled with ash during Ash Wednesday services in Paranak, Philippines, on February 26. People disinfect Kham's Masama Shrine in Tehran, Iran, on February 25. A worker in Digu stacks plastic buckets containing medical waste from coronavirus patients on February 24. Paramedics carry a stretcher off an ambulance in Hong Kong on February 23. People attend a professional soccer match in Kobe, Japan, on February 23. To help stop the spread of the novel coronavirus, the soccer club Thistle Kobe told fans not to sing, chant or wave flags in the season opener against Yokohama FC. A team of volunteers disinfects a pedestrian bridge in Bangkok, Thailand. A man rides his bike in Beijing on February 23. Hospital personnel in Cadogno, Italy, carry new beds inside the hospital on February 21. The hospital is hosting some people who have been diagnosed with the novel coronavirus. Doctors look at a CT scan of a lung at a hospital in Xiaogan, China, on February 20. A sales clerk wears a mask as she waits for customers at a hat shop in Beijing on February 18. Small companies that help drive China's economy are worried about how much damage the coronavirus outbreak will cause to business. Buses carrying American passengers arrive at the Haneda Airport in Tokyo on February 17. The passengers were leaving the quarantine Diamond Princess cruise ship to be repatriated to the United States. A medical worker rests at the isolation ward of the Red Cross Hospital in Wuhan on February 16. Authorities watch as the Westerdam cruise ship approaches a port in Sinukville, Cambodia, on February 13. Despite having no confirmed cases of coronavirus on board, the Westerdam was refused port by four other Asian countries before being allowed to dock in Cambodia. A worker has his temperature checked on a shuttered commercial street in Beijing on February 12. Beds are made in the Wuhan Sports Center, which has been converted into a temporary hospital. A child rides a scooter past a police officer wearing protective gear outside the Hong Mei House in Hong Kong on February 11. More than 100 people evacuated the housing block after four residents in two different departments tested positive for the coronavirus.
relatives of quarantined passengers wave at the Diamond Princess cruise ship as it leaves a port in Yokohama, Japan, to dump wastewater and generate potable water. Dozens of people on the ship were infected with coronavirus. The Dean Way branch of the County Oak Medical Center is closed amid coronavirus fears in Brighton, England, on February 11. Several locations in and around Brighton were quarantined after a man linked to several coronavirus cases in the United Kingdom came into contact with healthcare workers and members of the public. A police officer, left, wears protective gear as he guards a cordon at the Hong Mei House in Hong Kong on February 11. A worker wears a protective suit as he waits to screen people entering an office building in Beijing on February 10. China's workforce is slowly coming back to work after the coronavirus outbreak forced many parts of the country to extend the Lunar New Year holiday by more than a week. Chinese President Xi Jinping has his temperature checked during an appearance in Beijing on February 10. Photojournalists wearing face masks take photos of a bus carrying passengers after they disembarked from the World Dream cruise ship in Hong Kong on February 9. More than 5,300 people were quarantined on two cruise ships off Hong Kong and Japan. People participating in a Lunar New Year parade in New York City hold signs reading, Wuhan Stay Strong, on February 9. A shopper walks past empty shelves at a grocery store in Hong Kong on February 9. China's Ministry of Commerce encouraged supermarkets and grocery stores to resume operations as the country's voluntary or mandatory quarantines began to take an economic toll. A worker wearing a protective suit uses a machine to disinfect a business establishment in Shanghai, China, on February 9. Workers in protective gear walk near the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Yokohama on February 7. People in Hong Kong attend a vigil February 7 for whistleblower Dr. Li Wenyang. Li, 34, died in Wuhan after contracting the virus while treating a patient. A woman grieves while paying tribute to Li at Li's hospital in Wuhan on February 7. The anthem of the Seas cruise ship is seen docked at the Cape Liberty cruise port in Bayonne, New Jersey, on February 7. Passengers were to be screened for coronavirus as a precaution, an official with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention told CNN. A live installation is displayed by striking members of the Hospital Authority Employees Alliance and other activists at the Hospital Authority building in Hong Kong on February 7. Passengers are seen on the deck of the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked at the Yokohama port on February 7. Flight attendants wearing face masks make their way through Don Ewing Airport in Bangkok on February 7. Workers check sterile medical gloves at a latex product manufacturer in Nanjing, China, on February 6. A woman wears a protective mask as she shops in a Beijing market on February 6. This aerial photo shows the Lashenshin Hospital that is being built in Wuhan to handle coronavirus patients. A passenger shows a note from the World Dream cruise ship docked at the Kai Tak Cruise Terminal in Hong Kong on February 5. A mask is seen on a statue in Beijing on February 5. An ambulance stops at a traffic light in front of the Grand Lisboa Hotel in Macau. The virus turned China's gambling mecca into a ghost town. A dog in Beijing wears a makeshift mask constructed from a paper cup. Striking hospital workers in Hong Kong demand the closure of the border with mainland China on February 4. The Diamond Princess cruise ship sits anchored in quarantine off the port of Yokohama on February 4. It arrived a day earlier with passengers feeling ill. A medical worker wearing protective gear waits to take the temperature of people entering Princess Margaret Hospital in Hong Kong on February 4. Medical workers in protective suits help transfer patients to a newly completed field hospital in Wuhan. People wearing protective overalls talk outside a Wuhan hotel housing people in isolation on February 3. A man stands in front of TV screens broadcasting a speech by Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam on February 3. Lam said the city would shut almost all border control points to the mainland. A colleague sprays disinfectant on a doctor in Wuhan on February 3. Commuters in Tokyo walk past an electric board displaying dismal stock prices on February 3, the first business day after the Chinese New Year. Asia's markets recorded their worst day in years as investors finally got a chance to react to the worsening coronavirus outbreak.
Medical workers move a coronavirus patient into an isolation ward at the Second People's Hospital in Fiang, China, on February 1. Children wear plastic bottles as makeshift masks while waiting to check into a flight at the Beijing Capital Airport on January 30. Passengers in Hong Kong wear protective masks as they wait to board a train at Low Wu Station, near the mainland border, on January 30. A volunteer wearing protective clothing disinfects a street in Qingdao, China, on January 29. Nanning residents line up to buy face masks from a medical appliance store on January 29. Lai Ujun, left, a member of a medical team leaving for Wuhan, says goodbye to a loved one in Urumqi, China, on January 28. A charter flight from Wuhan arrives at an airport in Anchorage, Alaska, on January 28. The U.S. government chartered the plane to bring home U.S. citizens and diplomats from the American consulate in Wuhan. South Korean President Moon Jae-in wears a mask to inspect the National Medical Center in Seoul on January 28. Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam, Center, attends a news conference in Hong Kong on January 28. Lam said China will stop individual travelers to Hong Kong while closing some border checkpoints and restricting flights and train services from the mainland. Workers at an airport in Novosibirsk, Russia, checked the temperatures of passengers who arrived from Beijing on January 28. U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar speaks during a news conference about the American public health response. Two residents walk in an empty park in Wuhan on January 27. The city remained on lockdown for a fourth day. A person wears a protective mask, goggles and coat as he stands in a nearly empty street in Beijing on January 26. Medical staff members bring a patient to the Wuhan Red Cross Hospital on January 25. People wear protective masks as they walk under Lunar New Year decorations in Beijing on January 25. Construction workers in Wuhan begin to work on a special hospital to deal with the outbreak on January 24. Dr. Alison Arwady, Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health, speaks to reporters on January 24 about a patient in Chicago who had been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The patient was the second in the United States to be diagnosed with the illness. A couple kisses goodbye as they travel for the Lunar New Year holiday in Beijing on January 24. Workers manufacture protective face masks at a factory in China's Hubei province on January 23. Shoppers wear masks in a Wuhan market on January 23. Passengers are checked by a thermography device at an airport in Osaka, Japan, on January 23. People wear masks while shopping for vegetables in Wuhan on January 23. A militia member checks the body temperature of a driver in Wuhan on January 23. Passengers wear masks as they arrive at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila, Philippines, on January 23. A customer holds boxes of particulate respirators at a pharmacy in Hong Kong on January 23. Passengers wear masks at the high-speed train station in Hong Kong on January 23. A woman rides an electric bicycle in Wuhan on January 22. People in Guangzhou, China, wear protective masks on January 22. People go through a checkpoint in Guangzhou on January 22. Medical staff of Wuhan's Union Hospital attend a gathering on January 22. Health officials hold a news conference in Beijing on January 22. Click subscribe to receive the latest news.